the better Mikdash is going on fire, is on flames. What? He says, okay, he was like, like when we twin, twin like have deal, have a half of the half of the lot when we saw the twin towers falling. We were like, what? We couldn't believe what we see in all the news channels. What? He was looking, he couldn't believe. He left the cow, he left the man, and he started running. So the man is asking him, hello, where are you going? He says, oh no, wait, before he starts running, the, the, the cow all of a sudden start, get, got up and started working. So he said to this ma- other man, wait a second, wait, why is she getting up now if the, it's still going on fire? Why she's up? So he said to him, because at this very moment, Mashiach was born. What's the birthday of Mashiach? Tisha B'Av. Oh, really? Mashiach was born that second that the Bet HaMikdash was lit on fire. Mashiach was born. He says to him, really? How do you know? He's like, yeah. And you know what's his name? He said, what's his name? His name is Chizkiah ben Menachem. This man starts running. He's like, whoa, whoa, where, where are you going? Where are you going? You can't this. And you can have her. I'm, I'm, I'm changing a profession. I'm going to sell diapers. What? Why are you saying diapers? Because I must find out who was born the second that the flame, the flames were lit in the Beit HaMikdash. I want to know who is Mashiach. And that's what he does. He goes to the market and he starts giving out, like selling diapers to women. And then he sees this woman standing on the side, very poor, very bitter. <coughs> with a naked baby, completely naked baby, dirty, naked. He comes over to her and he says to her, excuse me, ma'am, it looks like you might probably don't have money to buy diapers. I can give it to you for free if you want. No, 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 no. Why not? I don't want to take care of this child. I want to neglect this child. This child has bad luck. Bad luck, he says to her, why are you saying that? She said, because my child was born the second that Beit HaMikdash went on fire. (gasps) He says to her, what's his name? And she says, Chizkiah ben Menachem. The Gemara is telling us, dear mothers. The second you have no more strength, the second you stop crying from all these tears that you see your daughters and your sons suffering the loneliness, suffering the bitterness, suffering the consequences and the hardship of life. No. This is the moment that your child is going to become something special, something powerful, like the baby Mashiach that was born in the darkest moment of life. Not only that, the the, the healing keeps on saying, Rav Shalom Banaich Bonaich. Your children, usually it, it, your children are going to be the ones that are not going to be built from you. You think I gave, I gave birth to this child, so this child is going to be my continuation, is going to build me. He says, uh-uh. At the time of Mashiach, the time of our days, mothers, dear mothers, stop crying. Stop crying because... Your children will be your built. They will build you. Shlom banaich, bonaich. Your children will build you. The bedidut, the loneliness, is so bad. It's so, so bad among us that sometimes we feel like ke alamana. It says in the in the in the, in Eicha that we feel like a widower. What's worse than being a widower? Ke almana. 
feeling like a widow, being, being married. Forget about singles. Forget about widowers. Forget about divorced, Hashem says. It's those who are married and feeling ke'alamana. They feel like a widower. They feel so lonely in the marriage. They feel so alone, so separated. Bat Israel comes to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and she says, Bat Israel, when he says it's the entire Jewish people, they say, Nagabi yado shel paro, velo yashavti badad. Nagabi yado shel sancheriv, velo yashavti badad. Nagabi yado shel HaKadosh Baruch Hu, badad yashavti. The, the hand of Paro touched me. I was not so lonely, lonely and despair. The, 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 the hands of Sancheriv, of the destruction of the Beta Megdash, the Romans, the Bab- Babylonian touched me. I did not feel the despair. But Hashem, you touched me. You touched me. And I feel badad. This bididut, this loneliness, is the missing, the gagua. When we miss somebody, we miss the lion. Who is the lion? Rosh Chodesh Av, it's mazal, is the lion. Nebuchadnezzar, when he came to, to destroy the, the Bet HaMikdash, it says, Aryeh, it says, Allah Aryeh Besivcho. The nine days that we are in right now, if we make it in Gimatria, it will come out to be 216 equals Aryeh. Aryeh is lion in Hebrew. Irmiya, when he, when he saw the Bet HaMikdash going on fire, he says, Oi, Ariel, Ariel. Oi, Aryeh, Aryeh. Bet HaMikdash, whenever, we, you, when, whenever Bet HaMikdash was, was, uh, was Kayam, when we pray to Hashem, we would have the image of a lion on the on on and that's how we would know that finally our tefillah was accepted. And when our tefillah, our prayer was not accepted, we would have an image of a dog. So whenever Bet Hamikdash was a kayam and we saw the image of the dog, we knew that at least we need to continue praying. Today, there is silent. There is no aryeh and there is no dog. The worst thing in communication, we always, even in an abusive relationship, we always say, no, commun- uh, no communication is worse than bad communication. When there is silent, when we give the silent treatment, it's worse than abusive relationship. Today we live in a world where Hashem is mistater, is in hester panim. It's silent. Do you hear me? Hello? Do you see what happens to your Bet HaMikdash? Do you see what he does in, in, your, in Kodesh HaKodeshim? Hello? Somebody home? Do you feel the pain? So if not the daughter of the Kohen Gadol, not some Kohen. She was beautiful. She was drop dead gorgeous. Gorgeous. When the Romans saw her, they took her, the, 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 the head of the general of the of the Roman general took her and all night, all night, it alelva does whatever he wanted with her, with her to be to be modest. The whole night she suffered. In the morning, they wanted to mock not only the entire night, they, 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 they shamed, they put her to shame, they mocked her. In the morning, they wanted to make even worse than that. <coughs> they took her, they dressed her with seven clothes of her father, the Kohen Gadol, right? The Kohen Gadol wears seven clothes. They took her to the market to be sold. And then this man come over to them and is like, I want to buy her, but hey, I can't see her. 
can you please undress her? And say, are you kidding me? She's beautiful. Please undress her. There's too many layers. And they take a layer off. And they start laughing. And he said, I can still can't see her. Can you take another layer off? And they laugh and they take another layer off. And another layer off. And another layer off. Until she stands there in front of everybody. Completely. And then she cries to Hashem. She cries to Hashem from the bottom of her heart. And that's what she's teaching us to do on Tisha B'Av. She's teaching us how to pray, what to say. And she says, Hashem, if not for my pain, if not for my shame, if not for me, if not for the, my father, Gwen Gadol, if not for my dignity, if not for the Jewish people, for you, Hashem, for you, save me. Save the entire Jewish people. Stop this astara. Stop this, 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 uh, what Titu started, no Havdalah, no separation. She's teaching us something very big to cry for Hashem. She was the daughter of not Ben, Peni ben Peniel. She, she's teaching us Peniel. If you separate the word Peniel, which is her father, it's Peniel. Cry to Hashem. Pene to Hashem. <laughs>